before we even came to California. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Praise God. You were too. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Praise oh my. The oh. presence of the Lord. Yes. yes. The presence of praise the Lord. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Praise you know, praise comes into his throne like incense, like incense before the Lord. And we enter into his presence with praise and thanksgiving. And oh, within my spirit, yeah, the victory song. We were singing in a victory song, brother yes, yes. and sister. We were singing a victory song and we were marching. And we're going forward. Oh, my, my. And we were taking things from Satan. We were marching. We were marching. It, it was, that's the way the army of the Lord marches. In the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. 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 In the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> I'm going to start a little differently there in Astomondara. You see, I, I've got to share with you. This is so precious. This, we've been praising God. And last year, after we left here, we, we came home after several weeks of traveling. And we, I was so tired. And we'd gone to bed. And I, my body was weary. I could, just couldn't go no more. And uh, I'd gone to bed. And in the nighttime, I began to go up in the spirit. And I went up into the heavenly. And I went up where the saints of God are praising God. And as I went up, my spirit was liberated and I was free. And I could praise with that heavenly throng. And I watched and I stood on like a bank on the river. And I looked at the multitudes and they were marching into God, the saints. And they were worshiping. And the joy and the praise and the adoration that comes forth and that, oh, my spirit was liberated. And the night we were touching it a little bit. Not like we do it, not like they do up there. That's what, oh, there's no, there's all release. There's nothing that holds you. And you can worship God. As, and we're not able to do it down here like that. There's, there's a liberation that comes in the spirit. But we were touching it tonight. We were walking into it in the realm of the spirit. And we were taking things for God. Alamanco. For I walked in that place and there were things that happened there, but I and I wanted to stay there. I never wanted to leave. You would never leave unless God brought you back. And I was taken over into the area of the warfare and God began to show me about intercession to teach me. Oh Lord, yes. For I went up above the earth. And I could see the whole world. And Satan's kingdom is just above the earth there. But I was up with the heavenly host, the angels that war in warfare. For you see, the Lord has, tells us that angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those that are to be heirs of salvation. And I began to understand as I was up there, they, they receive their knowledge from the Lord. They have, they have all the foreknowledge of God and they know what's going to happen down here before it ever takes place. And they talk to one another and they don't talk as one. They talk in multitude, but you have no problem to understand them. I could understand them perfectly. Multitude. And I could see in the world and they would, they talk to each other and they say, if Satan's going to attack over there. And they go and they outnumber him. They've always got him outnumbered. They're way ahead of Satan. And, and then I was brought back into the place where the warfare was going to come and they described it to me and what was going to happen. And angels gathered around me. Nothing could touch me. And I heard the warfare. And as Satan came, I've never heard anything like it. It was fierce. It was ferocious. And as this, as this warfare took place, I couldn't see a thing. I could only hear. I could hear. And oh, I thought, can, is there anything left that can be left in this world when this is over? And as, the, as things cleared afterwards, and I began to look around, wondered what would there be? I looked, and I saw that Satan had not even dented God's kingdom. He had not dented it. Oh, let's praise him. Let's praise Hallelujah. him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And you know, I think we know so little about warfare in the spirit. We know so little. Because they brought me over to a place, and as I stood there, I was aware of Satan's attack coming at me personally. And it came close. It came so close, it seemed like it would touch me, but it could not touch me. But I don't know how I could have been any closer to it. And in my, this vision, I, I was aware I was in my home in Tulsa, and I became aware of a, like a, I described it for later, I said it's like a truck, that one of these big trucks they drive, and like a road would come right up to our house. And like they'd drive that truck as fast as they could get it to go, and they would come and run it into my house. And in my vision, I sat up in bed and listened to this. And then I laid down again. And then I, I became conscious that I was returning back to earth. And as I came back, I began to talk to the Lord. And I said, I want to go over with those praisers. That's where I want to be. I want to be over there. All the joy. All the wonder of it. And I just want to, I just want to stay there. And he began to speak to me. And he said, people know very little about warfare. They know very little about warfare. And as I was coming back, he began to show me things, and he said, you and Fern must teach people about intercession. Andorakatista. And we went out on another trip to minister, and the day we came home, a young man picked us up at the airport, and as we were driving to our house, he said, do you, do you know what happened in Tulsa last night? I said, no. He said, there were several tornadoes in Tulsa. And we drove up to our house and unloaded the, our luggage and went into the house. And then the neighbor lady called, Fern, and she said, well, I see your home. And she says, you know what happened last night? She says, the tornado went over our house and sucked a big hole out of our roof. Sucked a hole out of the roof. About a six by eight, as he described it. And tore windows out of the house and everything. On my house, there were like two shingles on top of the house on the one corner had come off. Nothing was disturbed. The yard was full of debris on next door there, but my yard was in good shape. It was, it was clean. And then it lifted over a couple houses, went down, and tore out trees that were much bigger light than this, went over on the intersection and tore up a big building, nothing but matchsticks. And that's what I had heard in the spirit. See, I heard the warfare coming at me. And then we had the experience of a, a great lady that prays in Tulsa. She called, and we were over there with her. And she said, Jeannie Wilkerson, you probably heard of her. And she said, you know, the Lord hid me up all night praying. And she says, so storms came into the city instead of going through, they turned and wanted to come back. And she says, I had to pray all night over God's people to protect them. And I begin to understand in intercessory prayer, we pray for one another. I, I was shown it in the realm of the Spirit, but I knew nothing about it. God was taking care of it all. And you see, as we pray, you remember the story of Daniel, how he prayed, and his prayer was withstood for 21 days. You see, the angels up there, they're coming to roaring to bring the answer through, but intercessors that live on the earth here, we have a right to be down here. We have authority here, and we have a right to ask God to intervene in things. And then he sends that Holy Spirit, that helper, the Holy Ghost, to live within us. And when we begin to intercede, we begin to speak his words. We begin to speak his purposes. And we reach out for others to minister in their behalf. And as we begin to reach down here, the Lord was showing me things I would pray in the Spirit, things the Spirit had taught me. No man, I begin to understand that I was praying, and Jesus is our great intercessor, and I'm talking to him, and he's speaking to the angels, sending them forth. And in the Spirit, I even call out on the archangel Michael. In warfare. And I'm down here praying, and they're up there, and Satan's in between, and he's getting squeezed from both sides. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there's those realms. Tonight we were touching it. You begin to know it in the spirit. In the spirit. Oh, it was a victory song. A victory song. A victory song. Hallelujah. Yeah, for the Lord is ministering to us. Destinies. For their destinies, Lord. It's their destinies, Lord, we lift up to you. Their destinies, yes. Ministries of the Spirit, Lord, to come forth. They have, must come forth. Preparing, for they must prepare the way of the Lord's coming. 
Ja, auf Sunde, auf Sunde, mein, so wird es ab Bundes da. Das ist der Destiny des Lord, yes. Halleluja, Halleluja, Halleluja. Praise God. Oh, what a day we're living in, the day of signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Was a great day when Jesus was born and the angels heralded his birth and the shepherds on the hills. They announced and they looked for Jesus and found him. And it was a great day when he performed his first miracle, turning the water mm -hmm. into wine. Ah, yeah. And then you remember the, the man that came whose son was dead and, and Jesus interrupted the funeral and raised his son to life. Mm -hmm. And then you remember the woman with the issue of blood, how Jesus just healed her before he went to heal the son of the man who said, my son lives at the point of death. And by the time he got home, Jesus had yes. spoken Amen. the word. Oh, yes. those were wonderful days. But oh, the day we're living in. Hallelujah. hallelujah yes. It's so Amen. wonderful. Hallelujah. Amen. Because Amen. Jesus is full yes. of wonder. Yes. Yes. See, the signs and wonder. Signs are for the unbelievers. We don't need signs. We've got all the signs we need right here. Jesus has told us everything that's going to happen. We don't Amen. need to look for signs. I mean, we see the signs of the times because the scripture, our guidebook, tells yes. us that. Yes. But the, but the unsaved need to see the signs of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we, when we see them, we're full of wonder. Because Jesus is full of wonder. He's wonder full, full. Mm -hmm. And it's filling over the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's having his way with us. And more and more people are entering into that communion with the Father. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. What a day yeah. to live in. The day when we have full deliverance from everything. Yeah. And we're yes. free, absolutely Amen. free from the things that have bound us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise, Praise God. Praise God. Mm, yeah, the building. Mm. 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 My soul. Yeah, it is so, Lord. It is so. Mm. Apostolically. Home. The home too, Lord. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, mama. Mama. Yeah. The, the mama, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You touch, Lord. You lift up. Pastonin. Apostolian. Apostolian. Yes, this building. The building. Oh, my house. The Lord says, it's my house. It's my house. It's my house. Yeah, pastor, pastor. It's my house. It's my house. Sent for your sent by the Spirit of the living God. Come, come. Oh. Pastor, peace to restore. Restoring, for I am restoring. I am restoring. Christ, my son, my son, eyes, my eyes, my eyes have seen upon the rain. Oh, Chanamaka. Obedience. Restore it, for I am restoring. I am restoring. Mm, Michael, Michael, loose, 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 not handle. Then they handle destiny, the destiny, the destiny, the destinies of soul, the destinies of soul. Well, no. Oh, yeah. It's your abundance, Lord. It's your abundance. It's your abundance. See? Prepare, Lord. Prepare. Precise. 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 Say, O Rahu Shantala. Shalom to Shalain Shinina. O Shinni Shalom. Shiparistos. Obedience. For it's an obedience to your spirit, O God. 
It's an obedience to your spirit that they move, Lord. It's an obedience to the skistumba, skistorinda. Happy, 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 happy. Yeah, yeah. Happy, 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 happy. Yeah. My story, my story. Yeah, Lord, you. They'll <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it'll be there. It'll be there, yeah. It'll be there, yeah. But more, much. There's so much more, brother. There's so much more. So much more. For the Lord. Preparing for the Lord is preparing. Yeah, it's for the Lord. A stir, a story. Mama. Touch the mama, Lord. I lift up the mama. I lift up the mama. Stand with the mama. Stand with the mama, Lord. Stand with the mama as he goes. Stand with the mama, Lord. Stay with the mama. Two more. Two more. Two more. Yeah. Two more. Yeah. Yeah. Two more. Two more. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, time, Michael. Base. 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 We lose the base. We lose the base. Mm. Oh. Ah. Uh, Pristonda. Pristando. Pristend. Present, Lord. For we present unto you, Lord. Yes, we present unto you, Lord. Free. Free. Yes, to be set free. To be set free. To be set free. Yes. 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 We shall prepare thy way, my Lord. Oh, oh, man. So good. The Labati and the. Yes. Right. Oh my God, my God, my God. Loose the Santorita. Loose the Dakanta Bunta. Loose the Bikisa Munda. And the Katan So. And the Mekoli Samo. And the Leo Samoris. And the Bani Otolia Tustandis. And the Bakani Ostomia Sandinga. The Limbrance, the Limbrance, the Limbrance. The Release. And we set them free. Present. Present, for we present unto you, Lord. We present unto you, Lord. Oh, Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Oh, my. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 We magnify you, Lord. Obedience. It's, in, it's your obedience to the Lord. Yes, your obedience. Lift up, lift up. For we lift up, Lord, for your glory to be upon your people. Your glory to be upon them, Lord. And upon the body, upon the body, Lord. The glory of the Lord to come forth. The release of your spirit, Lord. And the deliverance of those that walk in darkness. Deliverance. Deliverance out of the hands of Satan. Into the glorious light of Jesus Christ. Into love and joy and peace. Oh, to know, to know him. That they may know him, Lord. That they may know him. And the peace and the joy and the blessing, Lord, for release, for we release, we release, we release, and we bring forth in the spirit. Yeah, oh, see the under. Hmm, not so under. It's so under. It's brandy. It's brandy. It's brandy. It's brandy. Hmm. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yeah. 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 Christus. Jesus Christus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 You see, we're standing with you to war against this. Because you have warred out against so many other spirits, attacking many others. But we need to strengthen you in the strengthen you. Holy 
so good, for we bless them, Lord. We bless them often, but still, though, yeah, in the name of Jesus, we strengthen them. We stand with them in strength, in strength, in strength. In the name of Jesus, strength. Yes, 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 yes. Strength in the name of Jesus. Strength, 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 Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, ha, 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 the prison bars are broken, the prison bars are broken, the prison bars are broken, now, 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 it's 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 Mm. Mm. Yeah, Master. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm. Preparing. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes. 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 Mm. Yes. Yes. Mm. yes. Yes. You can sit down. I'm going to read a little piece of mm. a little scripture. Atikomo standaba. Tusta bonta pakastito. Tusta bonta kita. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, want, I would like to have you open your Bibles, if you have them with you, to uh, uh, 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. Hallelujah. 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 Amando poco santo. Hallelujah. And Elijah, and the 41st verse, 1 Kings 18, starting at the 41st verse. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. But this is what Elijah did. Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now and look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's head. And he said, Go up and say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. You see, when the word of the Lord comes, we speak it forth. And he Elijah had prayed, and the heavens had been shut for three and a half years. It hadn't rained. And then the word of the Lord came to me and spoke it. But after he told Ahab there was a sound of abundance of rain, then he went and he prayed that what he had spoken should be fulfilled. Ah, so katava. And so it is. There's a responsibility when we speak out the word of the Lord. There's a responsibility to the one that speaks to pray. Ah, And it comes to pass. Hallelujah. Suppressed. For the oppressed will go free. They will go free. Oh, yes. Jesus. My Jesus. He sets them free. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. 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 Yeah. The warfare has been terrible. Terrible. But praise God. <laughs> In the heavens. <laughs> They're warring against Satan, and he's outnumbered, he's outnumbered. The answers are coming through, yes. and men's hearts are being turned to be favorable unto you. Hallelujah. And you shall stand in that place, you will and you shall praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you will give glory to the Most High God, because he is the one who has brought it, and brought it forth. Yes. Obey, for you will obey the Spirit, and you will do what he speaks to you to do. Yes, blessed, for blessed is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, it's my Jesus. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yeah. Free, free, free. They're free. Yeah, they're free. Well, you know, we've been standing with Rick and Pam. Yeah. And their yeah. church, Fondale Christian yeah. Center. Yeah. We've been standing with them. Even though we don't see each other for a whole year. Occasionally, very occasionally, we talk on the phone, not often. But, oh, the spirit that comes on and to hold them up so the answer can yes. get through so yes. Satan doesn't grab that answer midair uh. because we fail to go through see fail to go through we oh fail to God. persevere we fail to stand right. in the face yeah. of things brother Glenn Curry was talking to us about that 
standing, the ants and Satan snatches it, and we give up, so he puts that in a cubby hole, and that's gone until somebody can take it back, stand in there, and bring it back down to earth. God gives the answer right away. That was such a blessing, Brother Curry, when you said that in the car Amen. to us. Oh, Amen. we just love to hear Amen. about that. I never thought Amen. about that. Amen. Satan, the answer yeah. comes from God yeah. Almighty in the heaven of heaven, <laughs> and it comes through the earth's atmosphere. That's yeah. where, where Satan is, and if we don't persevere, he'll just take that answer. He puts it away. It Amen. took 21 days yeah. for Daniel, yeah. but Daniel didn't give up, did he? He no. fasted and prayed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that's what we do. We're intercessors, yeah. you know. It's yeah. like your uh, liver inside of your body. You can't see it. It's not to be made a big thing of. You know you can't live without it. You know in the Church of Jesus Christ you can't live without intercessors. You won't have any kind of a church. Oh, well, you can have a church. And you can have people come. But they're not going to have identifiable experiences with the oh, Lord yeah. Jesus Christ. They're not going to see yeah. the signs and wonders and make the churches grow so that they split apart every building they're in because they've got to have more room. These are the days when people know they have not got the answer. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've been there, my friend. I've been there, my friend. I know. I've seen people. We've seen people in every stage. So have the pastors. Some of you have. In every stage of seeking the Lord, drugs, alcohol, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the occult, reaching out. What are they reaching for? Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And we have him. Yeah. He comes in when we're saved, yeah. but unfortunately, yeah. most of us don't let him out. If we just let Jesus yeah. out, first in praise and worship, uh, and then in prayer to the Father, mm -hmm. talking to him. Yeah. Yeah. And that doesn't just mean in the congregation. That means when you're alone with Jesus. You seek his face. You talk to him privately. Like I talked to my husband when I married. I didn't marry him and then be silent forever. Not me. No, no. No, no. <laughs> and when I went with him, I learned to know him by talking to him. Now when he calls on the phone and he says, Hi, I know it's love. He doesn't have to identify himself as he's my husband. And in sight the date we were married, I know that. Hi. And I say, Hi. And then when he tells me something, I listen. And I can speak back and forth. He tells me things and I tell him things. And it isn't always where there's a lot of people around. Most of the time, it's when we're alone together. Those are the precious times. See, we have all the promises, but what if we use the promises like your credit card? And we go out and to spend the credit card all the time. And I come home with all my things and I give my husband the credit card and all the slips that show that it was charged. And he pays them, faithfully pays them, wants me to have anything I want. I never talked to him. What did you think about a wife that did that? See, that's what we do to Jesus. We say, oh, I claim that promise. Then you hear about it and we say, oh, that's me. I'm going to do it. But then we never talk to Jesus. And he longs for us to have the communion with him. Yeah. He longs. He's yeah. yearning. He's much more anxious to speak to you than you are to speak to him. So let him know those things. Make a New Year revolution right now. And say, Father, I'm going to talk to you more. And then you'll hear him talk to you. Praise God. Praise God. We have an experience we want to share with you. Uh, since we were here last year, many, many, many things have happened. They're accelerating all the time. And uh, as you, some of you know, we were very honored to be with Brother Copeland and several of his crusades. And the first one we were with him was in Anaheim. And uh, during that meeting, he called out my name, came right over to me in the middle of the conversation, it was the last night, and he said that I would be, he prophesied several things to me, and said I would be used in dreams and visions. Well, just shortly after that, not that night, but I believe it was the next night. Oh, by the way, I'm a bride again, thanks to you. Thank you very much for the lovely flowers. Um, uh, not that night, I believe, but we were back in Tulsa. I believe that's where it was. And I had a vision of Brother Ken Copeland, the next night I had a vision of Gloria Copeland, a completely different vision. And then when we were together in just a few weeks in Charlotte, North Carolina at the Crusade, I had the opportunity, we did when we were with him, to share these visions the Lord gave me. I'll not share them with you because they were private. And they had great meaning to them. They rejoiced in them, but they had no meaning to me. But then I had another vision. I was awakened, fully awake. And the Lord showed me a building in Burbank that was two stories high, very large, and this is what the Lord said. You remember that building somebody pointed out where they make the films, the world's largest indoor filming uh, 
building facility. Yes, I remember that. He said, now in that building, you know, they take pictures. They take the pictures. They have a, like a stairway and the bride is coming down. Or they have a murder scene where somebody's trying to get somebody over the balcony or something. And some of the scenes are so bad. The Lord said, people will sit in a seat that they paid good money for. They work hard all week and they take this money, pay it to sit in a seat and look at the films because the films are not shown there, the Lord said. They only take them there. They sell them and they sell them to the movie theaters and people will sit there like you're sitting here and they'll look at this film and some will even say, oh, I can't stand that. Oh, that's terrible. Tell me when it's over. Oh, it's awful. And the person next to him will say, it's just a picture. This is what my vision was. And God said to me, this is what Satan does. He takes pictures in the outer realm there, in the heavenlies. That's where he lives. That's where the principalities and powers are, right above the earth in the earth's atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And he holds court there. And he takes the pictures there. And then he comes down and he shows them to you. See? He shows you this terrible picture. Oh, can you believe it? Oh, and you say, my word, how can things be worse? What's going to happen to me? The bottom has fallen out of everything. I don't know what to do. This is the worst thing that's ever happened. And the Father says, remember, it's just a picture. Now, that was quite a vision I had. And I had many opportunities to use that against Satan, but one outstanding one. And when the Lord told us in the April to go that we should show up in Sweden. Yeah. You know, we've been to Sweden many times. Finland. The Lord spoke to us. He said, to, he said to show up in Sweden. And we began to pray and said, Lord, whoever should show up in Sweden, just bless them and you have them show up. And uh, we are praying the following day and the Lord says, I want you to show up in Sweden. And uh, we'd always been invited before and this was different and we thought, show up. And then we were talking with Billy Brim and she said, listen, if God tells you to do something, he tells you to go to church and you minister, he said, you go there and if you have to beg the preacher and tell him you've got to preach, he says, she said, you do that. She says, when God speaks to you, she says, be obedient. <laughs> and <laughs> so we made the arrangements to buy the ticket. And uh, I remember the day we had to make a down payment of, uh, I think it was $300, and we put a check in the mail in Tulsa. They come and pick our mail up at a box in front of the house. And... As the mailman picked up the check and left, a church in California sent us a check for 375 to cover. And so that's the way it, it worked all oh, the way through. Oh, was that a blessing and a confirmation to us? Yeah. See, we looked for the Lord yeah. to confirm. And during this time afterwards, the Lord would speak to me in times, and uh, it started in many times in my life in prayer, in intercession. God will speak. He'd, I, I would, he would, in my spirit, I would speak out like you would in tongues. You will fly to Sweden. And uh, at first, I praised God, we're going, we've made the arrangements. And later on, it came stronger, you will fly to Sweden. And, I kept, and finally, I said, Lord, we've bought the tickets, we're going to go. But the Spirit would keep saying within me, you will fly to Sweden. And then we were in Tulsa, and we'd, uh, it was around, uh, we were going to leave, leave around the 1st of August, about that time. And we'd made arrangements to, we'd called a uh, travel agency that said, get the most reasonable ticket to fly to Stockholm. And we'd, we'd be over there about three weeks. So we made the arrangements. And in Tulsa, we uh, were packing our car, getting ready on a Friday to leave for Minneapolis because we're going to fly from Minneapolis the following Friday to go to Stockholm. And we had the car all packed. And we were just uh, turning things off. And we were still wondering about We were just going to show up in Sweden. And the phone rang just as we were about ready to leave the house. And Fern answered it. Can you imagine April, May, June... Most of July went by, we had not told one soul about that. Ah, yeah. And I answered the phone, and the boy says, hello, and I knew it was a Swede, because I'm a Swede. They don't say hello, they say hello. And so, after I identified myself, the brother told us this, that he, was, he had been wanting to go after this time for a month or two, he had wanted to go to Korea with some ministers, and he'd prayed about it. His wife kept telling him, I don't think you're going to go to Korea, the doctor told I don't know. I just feel in the spirit that somehow it just doesn't witness with me that you're going to be going. So he says he kept, now he was kind of undecided, and he thought, well, I'll fast and pray and determine the Lord's will. That's a good way. 
So he fasted and prayed for seven days. And on the seventh day, the Lord said to him, you must call the Halverson. Now when he called, I didn't, we don't know this, we had met him, but I mean, he said he had met us the year before at the conference, and we couldn't just uh, displace him right away. But he called and he said, and when he found out we're going to be in, we had planned to be in Sweden in one week, he could hardly believe it. It's like when they were praying for Peter's release out of prison, remember? Instead of praising the Lord, they said, it couldn't be him. It's his ghost. Praise God, God did the delivering. And there he was, knowing that we were scheduled to come over there in a week. Well, we were up in Minneapolis Monday. We drove up Friday and Saturday. We got up there Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And our uh, son and his wife live up there. And many friends. Well, on Thursday morning, the day before we're supposed to leave, we get a telephone call at 9.20 in the morning. And a voice says, uh, is this Mrs. Halverson? Yes. Do you have a daughter named Christine? And I said, we have a daughter-in-law named Christine. And they said, this is Metropolitan Medical Center calling. And this is the emergency ward. Your daughter-in-law was brought in here at 7 o'clock this morning in a uh, car accident. We'd like to have you come right down. Well, it didn't take us long to get down there. We were drove and got there at about quarter to 10 that morning. We could have been there at 7.30 if they'd called us, but I guess all this took time to find out. Our son was out of town just for overnight. He was coming in that day and expected momentarily. So we rushed down there and went to the emergency ward and nobody would tell us anything. They had the curtains over each of the sections and we saw people coming and going, nurses. Nobody would talk to us and we would stop people and say, do you, who, what, where should we ask? We want, if we want to get to Chris. Nobody knew. Finally, a doctor came out. We'd waited almost, I think it seemed like hours, but certainly most an hour. And a doctor came and he said he had come on duty at 7 o'clock when the ambulance was bringing our daughter-in-law in there. And he told us that uh, she was unconscious and they were taking x-rays. They'd been taking x-rays and she was in a CAT scan now and it'd be a little while. But another doctor would uh, come and tell us about her. Then after another 15 or 20 minutes waiting, praying, then they took us up to second floor where we waited again. And finally another doctor came to us and, um, and we went out in the hall with him and uh, as I say if you've ever had a doctor give you bad news you can tell before he starts what it's going to be because he leans his body to you and he's a very kind looking man very very gentle looking uh, doctor a young doctor and uh, he wanted to convey to us the seriousness of the situation he told about the severe injury to her head and her backbone. And you, I can't repeat his words exactly because it was just such a moment. And he used words like wheelchair the rest of her life, incapacitated, no mobility, uh, not able to get her out of this uh, coma, that, or not a coma, but anyway, they couldn't bring her around. She was alive, but that's all they could say. She does not respond to, to any voices. And he said, you can go, I'll send the nurse for you. She's just being brought in her room, and I'll send the nurse for you. Oh, we wanted to follow him into the room, but we waited there. And as soon as he went, we took hands. Yes. And we Amen. said, Satan, we do not believe the picture. Amen. It's not for us. Amen. Not for Chris. No. Uh-uh. No. It's not ours. No. We absolutely no. refuse no. that. That's our daughter. She's Amen. covered with the blood. Amen. And we are not going for it. My spirit, the whole time the doctor was talking... It sounds funny to you, but this is the truth. The whole time the doctor's talking, my spirit's saying, Baloney, Baloney, Baloney. And, I, and really, you know he's a nice doctor. And I, I certainly have respect for those that have trained and in the medical profession and other professions that they train in and have earned their doctorates and things. But I wanted to look in his kind eyes. I wanted to say, liar, liar, liar. Because see, it was all in the spirit. And there was this bad picture. We grabbed hands. We said, Satan, we don't go for the picture. We don't buy it. The uh, doctor himself came back. And he said, you can come to the room now. And he led us into the room instead of the nurse. And he tiptoed in the room. And we tiptoed. You know, the gravity of the situation makes you act like that. It does. I mean, you don't walk in like this when it's serious. So he tiptoed in. He leaned over to her in the bed. She was laying on her side. And I, I really couldn't see her face, and he leaned way over to her, and he says, Christine, Christine, do you know these people? And as I stand before God Almighty, Christine turned her head to us, opened her eyes, looked at us, 
Mm-hmm. And she smiles and she Amen. says, Sure, it's Mom and Dad. Praise Just God. Like that. Hallelujah. Mom and Dad. Amen. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. I'll pass up an opportunity Hallelujah. to praise the Glory. Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 After loving, she said to us, I'm okay. We said, yes, we know you're okay. We loved her for a while and talked with her a little bit, prayed with her, and mm-hmm. then we left to go home because Jim is due at their home momentarily. He knows nothing. And as we got to their home in Minneapolis, he had been home about 10 minutes before we arrived. And uh, we told him about this, but we said, Chris is all right. And he was very excited to get down to the hospital, of course. And uh, he stayed with her overnight. And we called from the airport the next day. We knew she was all right. And I want you to know, they kept her in the hospital overnight. And Jim stayed in the room with her. He, he loved her so much. He just didn't want to be away from her. And you know, she came home the next day. Hallelujah. There's not a thing in the world Hallelujah. wrong with her. Nothing wrong Hallelujah. with her. Hallelujah. Nothing. Hallelujah. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. She was in a meeting we had at a missions conference. Well, she wasn't a missions conference. It was before that. We had a meeting in a our church in Minneapolis and of course our kids came and I told about this and I had Chris stand up my goodness he's a picture of health never has any trouble but listen if we bought the yeah. picture we'd be stuck with it yeah yeah you go for it yeah. it's yours mm-hmm. see you you buy it it's mm-hmm. yours Amen. so be careful Satan's mm-hmm. telling lies these days he's Amen. using doctors to use long sounding things and people that won't memorize the scripture, won't quote the scripture, will memorize those long sounding names and they'll tell you exactly word for word what the doctor said. I think it's a disgrace. Yeah. Amen. That's it. Yeah. You got it for me. Yeah. I don't Amen. care if I'm criticized or not. I know doctors Ooh, have their yeah. place. Of course they do. Yeah. My goodness, I go to a doctor, I go to a dentist. But I'm telling you something. We've got to start putting God's word first. We've got to know yeah. who we are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. First, look to the Lord for things. First, pray to the Lord. Yeah. And if you need medical yeah. help after that and you don't get the answer, of course, then go to the doctor. But don't go to the doctor first and quote him to everybody and don't quote the word. Hallelujah. Praise yeah. God. Yes, and I say a 53.1 scripture says, Who believed our report? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. The we Lord's report. And we need to quote his report. Yeah. And that's the thing we must confess. Yeah. 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 But there's a little... Uh, I want to share a little bit extra with this story about going to Sweden and the young man that called. The year before, I think we may have shared this with you, the Lord... Uh, uh, we were going to have a vacation in northern Minnesota and uh, Fern had already sent a checkup. And that night as I was sleeping, I couldn't sleep. All night I was praying in the spirit and God was wanting to tell me something and I... And finally, I just took the time to just get up and pray, and, and, and the Lord spoke to me. He says, don't make any plans for the first week in August. Well, now that's just like kind of a little sentence, you know, it doesn't seem like much. That was in April. That was in April. I, it will be two years since April. And uh, so I got up in the morning and said to Fern, well, we're not to make any plans for the first week in April. She says, where are we going? I says, I, or no, first week, yeah, no, August. I says, I don't know. But, you know, we came down to Tulsa, stayed overnight, we came from Minnesota, and we were going to down to Houston to minister with Mama Goodwin in a minister's conference. And we stayed in Tulsa one night, and while we were there, Kathy Caseman called and said, Jim Caseman is, uh, was going to be in, uh, over in uh, Sweden and, and Finland, but he's booked in Norway to be with Dr. Cho, was going to be there one day, and, but Cho had scheduled him for the whole week, and he said, you will be here. So he says, call Phil and Fern. He says, I bl- just see if they can take my place over there in Scandinavia. Well, we knew about it. So we said, yes, we know the Lord wants us to go. We went to Houston. And in the meeting we just mentioned about, we're going to be going to Sweden. And out of that congregation, a family came forward. And uh, they said to us, we want to pay for your trip to Sweden. And they said, we're going to send you first class. And all we objected. I thought, oh, don't spend all that money. And, you know, we didn't realize that was the only way we could get over there. Everything was booked. We had to go first class. <laughs> and they came. Now, this will encourage the heart of you pastors. They came and get... There's an island called Erlen here. It's a long island just across from Germany. And uh, 
there was a minister's conference and they said, oh, we should have about over 300 Lutheran pastors there. That's the state church in, in Sweden. They were registered for the seminar. It was under a big tent. They held about 2,000 people. When we got there, there were over 800 of them registered in, in that meeting. And they wanted, they were hungry, they wanted to know about being filled with the Holy Ghost. They wanted to know about intercession. They'd come from all parts of Sweden. And as you know, from north to south of Sweden, it's almost 2,000 miles. That's a big, long, narrow country. And they came down and they were so needy. And we were praying. And as we were ministering to them, you know, our heart was filled with compassion. And some of these people had this, some had to sell things to get there. And they had their children. And they were eating not a lot. They were just watching very carefully and we observed this and Fern looked in her uh, suitcase and she found some envelopes we didn't know where they came from but we took this money we had and we put money in different envelopes no it was US money dear yeah yeah yes yeah, US money we've been over there so many times yeah and so we just put different amounts in different envelopes I put it in my pocket and as we go through the um, the cafe there to eat and stuff I just take stuff and I put in their pockets and that's the way we used the money. The man that called us on the phone, he said, you know, he said, I had two children. My wife was pregnant. The third child on the way. He says, I had many bills to pay. And he said, uh, Oh, Beckman, who has the Rama Bible School in Uppsala, Sweden, he says, he called me. He said, you be to that meeting. He says, you get there, whatever you have to do. And he said in the meeting, he says, you prophesied to me about my ministry. I didn't remember it. And he said, you put enough money in my pocket. He says, to pay all my bills. And I made a down payment on a home. And when we came over there, this is what he was telling. He says, I now have my home. And we had dinner with him. And the, the third child had arrived, a little boy. And he says, God has blessed me. Yeah. And at that time, the exchange rate had never been higher. It was 8.6. So for a hundred dollars in our money, they got eight hundred and sixty dollars in Swedish coin. Yeah. We used the money just the way we wanted to. Amen. Yes. Amen. So we need to be a channel for what God wants us to do, and we didn't realize when God says that He says, "I just don't want him, you to make any plans for the first week in August." We little did we realize what was entailed in that. Because it opened up many things that transpired such as this that we have seen. And this last year, we went over there and they had a, this minister's conference in a large auditorium. And then they had another big room about the size of this room right here. And it was, pastors came in there and the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to minister to the pastors. And then he talked to me in Swedish and I understood it. And he began to talk to me, and he says, between four and five in the afternoon, he says, the Spirit of the Lord is going to fall on the pastors. And we came there at 2.30 to start to minister, and we got on the platform, and someone brought water, and someone else, and it ended up with several glasses of water here. And someone bumped them, and the water ran over, the Bibles, over everything, and our interpreter, it ran here, it was wet, and... As we started out, one of us would disappear, so we tried to wipe up water, then the other one would disappear. And it was for an hour and a half we were plowing. And when four o'clock came, Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> all hallelujah. glory broke loose. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. The Lord just called the pastor something. Hallelujah. But just before that, the man that was interpreting for us, he was talking, and he said to me, I never had an experience like that before. He said, suddenly, he said, we were sharing experience of some wonderful things that have happened and these men were sitting back there they were making fun three of them and he saw into the realm of the spirit and he saw their hearts and he began to minister them in Swedish and he said to me I've never had an experience like that before and then just after that we called the pastors forward Billy Brim was there and she stood back here and Sten Nielsen he's a uh, been a missionary to India uh, a Methodist man in a bishop in Sweden and he's been in the ministry for 50 years. He stood by Billy and that's why Fern and I begin to minister to pastors and their wives. She said, tell me about them before they pray. And it was a time, we never had an experience like this, where it was intercessory prayer and prophetic. 
And we, in that meeting, we had all the leading bishops of every leading church in Sweden, from the Lutherans, the Baptists, the Methodists, they were all there. And the Holy Spirit zeroed in on their church, and the prophecies came forth to each one of them, and God ministered to about them. And uh, I'll never forget a, a Methodist bishop there. I, I, it was, never had an experience like it. As I tell them what God was going to do, I mean, it was just like, a, like you shoot an arrow into someone. He would double up completely. And you, in the spirit, it was, I knew it was going right to his heart, in the spirit. And he was receiving and receiving. And afterwards, Stan Nielsen told me, he said, he's, he's one of the most uh, spiritual men in Sweden. But he was hungry for the things of the Lord. And then I remember one pastor, I, as I took his hands, I began to pray out in the spirit about, the Lord says, you're to build me a house. You're to build me a house. And this little Lutheran man and his wife, way in northern Sweden, had gone out. God had told them to build him a house. They had cut down the timbers. And they built with their own hands, mixed the, their own cement, their own brick, and they built a small chapel. And they were going to have a Bible school of the 30 people coming in there to study in this little room. And as I stood there and prayed, they realized that what God had spoken to them early, it was being confirmed to them now as we ministered. But you know, to me it was interesting because for some months before, I had been praying that and interceding for them. And the minute I touched them... I knew who I'd been praying for. And I, I just began to say, and I began to rejoice in spirit. I had no understanding of what they had been doing. I only knew my part, what I had been doing. And so in the spirit, you know what God reveals unto your spirit. But what's on the other side, they have to tell you about you, uh, some of what goes on, you know. Praise God. But, yeah, go ahead. The man that we that called on the phone and that told us and said hello come to Sweden we didn't remember that was the man that the year before we had given the money to so he got out of debt got reestablished in the ministry was able to buy a home and was very influential in southern Sweden especially around Gothenburg Stockholm is at the um, side toward Europe and Gothenburg is clear across Sweden toward Norway and that's where he was in Gothenburg and um, he had arranged meetings, and some of the meetings were with a group that uh, uh, when we, some people, when they found out where we were going to go, they said, oh, are you sure you want to go there? You know, they're into submission. And we said, well, God doesn't care. He's sending us there. We don't care if they're Buddhists or Mohammedans or... We don't care what they are. The Lord told us to go yeah. there. We're like, God's got something he Amen. wants to do. Yeah. We'll go. Mm -hmm. And anyway, we love Derek Prince. We love Bob Mumford. We love all the great men of God. Some of them have gone over this way. Some have gone over that. Some are in the ditch here. Some are in the ditch there. But listen, that doesn't mean that Jesus isn't real to them. And we can't make a wall of separation. We go to our own company because we know as believers what we believe. But listen, keep an open spirit to those that mm -hmm. don't just see exactly like you do. They yeah. think one little thing and you think another mm -hmm. little thing and that can get to be a root that can absolutely separate you. Mm -hmm. And we were able in the sweetest way, we were able with those beautiful people in the different cities we went to, large congregations, some smaller, that we loved them. They could see Jesus sent us because he had told us to show up. We had made up our mind we are going to sit in the airport at Stockholm until somebody showed up. Until we got this phone call a week before. So God knew those precious people needed ministry too. And they needed to see the ways of the Spirit and see what God wanted to do with them. They loved us so much. We had wonderful, and with the, the leaders there too, we had wonderful time with them. And so you see, if we're praying for unity, if we're praying, oh Lord, make us one. Let us flow as one. Let the world see that we're flowing. Well then when the Lord says go, just go right ahead. Show love. Don't make a difference between these little things. Baptists, Lutherans, Presbyterians, Methodists, who cares what they call themselves? If Jesus is Lord and he's their God and has forgiven their sins, that's the only criteria we have to say we're one in fellowship. Nothing else. Not the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If we've got the baptism of the Spirit, then we should show it in power. And unfortunately, some of the others don't see that power in our lives. It's not only overcoming, but healing power, signs and wonders. So we were happy. Oh, we had a marvelous time in Sweden. It's, um, 
You see, many times we don't understand what's happened. And what had transpired here was a person had come into that community and had been moving in the gifts of the Spirit, but they began to prophesy that the people in the congregation should sell all their property and that they should go to Africa and be missionaries there. So they began to sell their property and they all left and they got down into Belgium when everything fell apart. Then they came back to Sweden and some of the homes hadn't sold yet, so they, they, they lived together. And then what they did to protect themselves, they, they appointed about six men or seven men to be uh, elders over the church to watch over this so this wouldn't happen again. You see, what we need to know is that in the realm of the Spirit, in the, the manifestations of the Spirit, there's a speaking in tongues, there's the interpretation of tongues, and there is prophecy. And these are things that we speak forth and things that we do. But the other six gifts there, there's no instruction how to use the other six gifts in either the 12th or 14th chapter. These things are initiated by the Holy Ghost. But people try to use like the word of wisdom and knowledge in, in moving into these areas in their natural as they're given forth a prophecy and it's, it causes chaos. And we need teaching on how to use the gifts of the Spirit because it has wrought havoc in the church when it's not operated right. And God showed us before we went over there that this was precious fruit, oh, but we had to pick it carefully. Very carefully. And we went into that with that group, and these men stood back and they watched everything. And the first service we were in, God spoke to Fern and said to, to uh, minister to the oppressed. And the oppressed came forward, and I mean their heads were hung down, they were so, so oppressed they couldn't lift their heads, and you know, it was just, they, as we instantly just delivered, it was so easy, just like this. And they began to be joyful, and lift up, and to rejoice, and the people rejoiced. And God, as we were praying, we said, Lord, we don't have anything to give to these people unless you give us something. And, and, and the Lord says, just give them anything you want. The door was open, and we ministered. And you know when the Lord sends you to do something, He equips you for the situation. And we moved into a realm of the Spirit that was tremendous there, because as we, we called, the, as the Lord would speak to us, we called couples forward to pray for them. And we had two couples, as we were ministering, two couples came forward, a man, men with their wives, and they were unsaved. And they, we didn't know it. We didn't know it. And they came forward, and as we ministered to them in English, they understood in Swedish. You see, when you're praying, you don't have an interpreter. You know, when yeah. you speak, there's an yeah. interpreter, but when you're praying with them, the interpreter isn't there. And so, and I remember as they went down, I, I began to talk to them about self. I took their hands and began to pray in tongues, and they were slain in spirit. And then I knew I had to kneel down by them and tell them about salvation and lead them in prayer. And I told them about the Holy Ghost, and we would lead them in that. They'd be filled. And reading the word, and these things went on. These men were standing there. And then the climax came. The leaders were standing there. And I walked over and began to talk Swedish to the leaders. And in the last service they came and they said, You know, we want you to pray for us. We want you to pray for us. And I said, Bring your wives up, form a circle. And I stepped into the middle of the circle. And I said, Lord, and I said, Any deception or anything that's entered into this, assembly here, I says, we break the power of Satan in the name of Jesus, for these people are honest, they want to serve you, and the anointing came, and God ministered to them, and Fern walked out, speaking in, like prophecy in English, and I followed her behind, and I was given the interpretation in Swedish, and we walked up and down the church, and I mean, the glory of the Lord came down, and God moved, and we just... Uh, a man just came from Sweden and he came over and he said, these people, he said, they love you so much and they said, if it's possible to come over this summer, they want to pay your way if you just come and minister to them. Now, there's no way they can afford to pay our way, but they said, they want you to come back and to minister. So God opened the door and they saw God moving, the love of the Lord, and we thought on scripture and to teach them the ways to move in the Lord. Precious fruit. Yes. Precious fruit of yeah. Jesus that loves the Lord. Oh, so anyway, there we were. We were pipelines again. Yes. See, nothing in the pipe, but oh, what comes through the pipe just depends on what you're full of. 
And oh, we were full of the love yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. Wanted to share that with them. The more we heard that they didn't believe just like we did, the more we were anxious to share with them. And they received it so beautifully. And, you know, when you go overseas, and you don't go overseas to mm -hmm. enlarge your ministry, you go because hopefully everybody goes because God has sent them. And uh, there's certainly nothing you pay your way over or, or the convention that's invited us to pay our way. But the people themselves, the economy, like in Sweden and, the, and overseas, is not good. And so they can't afford to pay for us to come. Anyway, the Lord hasn't spoken to us to go over there. If he does, of course, we'll go. But... Um, I, we just we just wept when we heard that yeah. that the uh, groups of people were wanting if we only came for them they wanted us to come and they'd pay our way and we said oh Lord oh surely the love of God has been shed abroad in their hearts and they've learned more about the Spirit and want to enter in more so let's praise the Lord Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Thank you Lord Jesus Hallelujah Bless you Lord Hallelujah Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah 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 Thank you Lord Thank you Lord Hallelujah um, the people that gave us the money to fly to Sweden, that large sum of money, we didn't know they were such wealthy people. But one day we got a telephone call and the mother was just all, uh, she, just frantic. She says, you've got to pray, you've got to pray. And uh, so we began to pray. My son was in agonizing yeah. pain. And he had uh, kidney stones. Okay. And, uh, and she says, he's, he's in such pain. She says, you've got to pray. And she says, just stay on the phone. And she left. And there was no one on the phone for several minutes. Several minutes. No one on the phone. And then she came back on the phone. And she said, my son just passed a kidney stone. While we were praying stone. on the phone. stone like that. Uh, she did the right thing. She called for prayer first. Yeah. Yeah. She called for Amen. prayer first. She knew Amen. where her help was. Her Amen. source. And we were able to stand with yeah. her. Yeah. And you'll be able to stand with Amen. people. See them delivered. See yeah. God's hand like that. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Also on our Friday, we've been very privileged to minister to uh, Rhema students um, on Friday night. Just Rhema students and their spouses. And we're crowded out. And next year we know we'll have bigger facilities. We're in very large home, two very large homes now every Friday evening. And the reason we missed last Friday was because it was spring break. Now, we'll be back for this Friday. Although it would be better for us to leave from, we go from here to San Francisco, Oakland, it would be better for us to go to Minneapolis. But that would make us miss a Friday in Tulsa. So we're going to leave from Oakland, go to Tulsa for the Friday night meeting because we have made a commitment to God. Right. And if there were only two students there, I'll guarantee a Fernand right. Field would be there. Because right. it's between right. us and what God yeah. told us to do. And we are going to be faithful. And that's what God yeah. is looking for. Yeah. Faithful people. The pastors are looking yeah. for faithful people. If yeah. they could only find faithful people. People promise a lot of things, but to get it done, a lot of times it doesn't work out. So the faithful ones that stand by the work, that's yeah. where God yeah. has his chance to bless. Praise God. Uh, in one of the Friday night meetings, you remember, we were praying, uh, as we came in, the hostess of the home, her name is Leanne, and they had a big farm in Kansas, and the Lord told them, just rent the farm out and come to Rama for two years. They're a wonderful couple. Well, all the couples are wonderful, yeah. really, though, but... She said to us as we came in that night, she says, oh, can we just pray tonight that our farm will be rented? We have prospects to rent the farm, but she says we can't. They're not decided. They, they've looked at it, and they've looked at the machinery, and, and if they don't rent, we have no prospects, and we do need the money to keep going to school every month. Well, we taught on intercessory prayer, and then we do intercessory prayer. And uh, so we were praying, and we were reminded, let's all agree now in the Spirit. It was a quiet. Our prayer meetings are a little more quiet. And we listen to what the Spirit is praying, and then we join in with that. We said, let's pray for Leanne, and uh, what's his name, uh, Tom? Let's pray for the farm to be rented. So just for a couple minutes, we just prayed, Father. And while, when we just finished praying, he went to answer the phone just as we were through praying. And it was a call from the people, and they said, we've decided to rent your farm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The way it's supposed to work. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we've got so many things yeah. to tell you. Praise God. Praise God. Signs and wonders. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, people want to know, what's the bottom line? How do, I, how do I get this? How do I do it? And I'll say the first thing for you to do do what we did. Try what we did. We didn't know either. We wanted to prove to God what could we do to 
to please him because we wanted to see the work of God go forward in our church. We were using every means we had. We used all the income we had after we paid our bills and had our necessities met. We didn't buy extra things at all in those days. We went without. We'd buy a little rug to put over the little carpet that was going <laughs> threadbare at the entrance and so forth, and uh, we just wanted to help get the work Thank established, so we God. asked the Lord to bless us, and then we began. We always tithed. We always gave a tenth of our income. If you don't tithe, you're missing a big blessing. So we had always given a tenth, but we said, oh, we're going to start tithing according to an income we want to make. So in those days, if my husband was making $10,000 a year, we tithed as if he was making twenty. You might try that. It's wonderful. <laughs> Number one, the tithe doesn't belong to you in the first place. In Leviticus it says the tithe belongs to the Lord. Are you robbing God? You give him what's to him. You haven't given him anything when you give him one-tenth. That belongs to him who gave you the breath that you breathe. And then when you give him what belongs to him, in Malachi he says, when you give it to me, I'm going to open the windows of heaven. I'm going to bless you. Amen. I'm going to Amen. put your basket Amen. so yeah. full it's going to run over. Amen. Just yeah. because you did what I told you to do. Mm-hmm. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Thank Hallelujah. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lift up. Praise Lift up. Lift up. Lift up. Praise Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Praise you know, uh, in one of the nights we were praying in the prayer meeting, and we will, uh, we will lead them to pray for our nation first, and we pray for our leaders, and we have them pray for Ramah. And then it's, uh, the, the Spirit will lead. It'll, uh, uh, things I pray for during the week and the, before the meeting, the things that our Lord is concerned about in the realm of the Spirit, we'll have them pray about those things. But as we were praying one night there, suddenly I heard myself speaking out of my the Spirit. I began to speak about the dish, the dish. And I could see it was like a, a tower that was being built and uh, it was like in rock and it was... But I was there helping him, and we were and we were bracing it. Oh, we were making it so strong. And I was praying about the dish, and then the spirit I was helping to put up a tower and a real firm foundation. And we we're praying. And so I just explained to the, them what I was seeing as we were praying, and we prayed until there was a rejoicing in the spirit. And uh, the lady of the house called us uh, the next day, and she says, "My brother, who graduated from Rama, he's uh, he's, he's down in the Caribbean." And she says, uh, they had a hurricane down there that tore down their uh, uh, satellite dish, the, the equipment there. And she said, they're, they're out there and they're going to put up the tower, she said, and he wants us to pray, he wants us to pray for him. Oh, she says, we already prayed about that last night. Yes, hallelujah. She says, we already prayed about that last night. So you see, in intercession, as you join together in united prayer, it's very powerful. And you reach out where there are hungry people who are wanting to do God's work. You join together with them in faith to bring forth God's purposes. And it's very powerful as you pray because you release things in the realm of the Spirit, the things that are needed, people, help, monies, whatever it is, you begin to release it and it begins to flow where God wants it to flow. Yes. And we have that authority to move in the Spirit Amen. and to loose it and bring it yes. forth. Yes. Yes. And I think of another incident. It's, it's so different how it'll happen. We, we were praying and suddenly we said, now everyone that's here, we just want you, if the, just a close family, if someone needs uh, healing, if someone needs... Uh, an unsaved loved one, just name their first name and say salvation, say healing. We said, not for anyone that you've heard about, it's just your own close family we're going to pray for. And we prayed. And uh, a lady came back a couple of weeks later and she was very timid and she said, oh, she says, can I say something? And we said, sure, share with us. And she said, you know, my father's been unsaved and for years we've tried to win him to the Lord. And he was alcoholic and had all kinds of problems. But she said, at the supper table the other day, she said, as we sat down to eat, she said, I asked my, I believe, 10-year-old son to say grace. And he said, Mom, would it be all right if I said a scripture? So he said, John 3.16. As he said, John 3.16, her father, the tears started to stream down his cheeks. And she says, wouldn't you like to have received Jesus as the Savior? And he said, yes. Yes. And he received Jesus. And these are the things we have been seeing happening as we have had intercessory prayer meetings. Another lady there came and she talked about her daughter, had gone to the doctor, got a report of cancer. 
cancer. And you know, when people hear that word today, it's like, you remember Naaman in the, the Old Testament? He had leprosy. He was a general, but he was a leper. And it, it has that same fear of a dreadful deceit. And she came to the meeting and, oh, my daughter, my daughter, oh, can we pray? And we had, and she had mentioned her name that night, and we had prayed. And when she went back for the, the next step to be taken care of, they, ex they examined her, no cancer. No cancer. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's the God we Amen. serve. Amen. Amen. We have a wonder-working God, and he wants to move in our behalf, and we must read his word. This is the textbook, and this will explain to you how it comes, because faith comes by the hearing of God's word. When you pray in tongues, you are building up yourself on your most holy faith, but faith doesn't come in praying in tongues. That faith is for communion with the Lord, to commune with Him. The Holy Ghost is given for power. And in that realm, you can step out in war against Satan. But it's reading God's Word that will give you faith, and you've just got to have that Word, because there's sometimes you have nothing else to stand on. And that's the only thing you're going to have that you can be sure of, because God watches over it to perform it. Praise God. Mm. Hallelujah. We want to close with this. Um, you know the tabernacle in the wilderness was a large outdoor, really, a tent without a cover. It was just sides to it, and it only had one way to go in. And all the Eastern religions worship and bow. The Mohammedans bow to the east. That's the tradition. of. And this had a door to the east. And anybody could come into it because it had a light curtain there. Even a child could move that curtain and go in there. And that was the place of sacrifice. That's where all the priests were and the animals came. And somebody had a turtle dove, somebody had a sheep, somebody had a little lamb, depending on the gravity of their sin, that they were to offer sacrifice. But there, were, there was another building inside of that, and that contained two sections. One was a holy place, and the other was the holy of holies. In the holy place only entered those that were set apart for the ministry, the priests. Only the priest could go in there. And of those priests, none could enter the Holy of Holies except the high priest, the one high priest, who is the type of Jesus. And he would go into the Holy of Holies once a year to offer first for his own sins and then bring incense in first and then put, put the blood of the sacrifice on the mercy seat. Now, when we get to know Jesus, we come into the outer court and we receive forgiveness of sins. And we know Jesus is our Savior. But then we want to go on and serve him further, don't we? The love that he's shown to us makes us want him. And we can become kings and priests under him. Jesus said we are. But a king and a priest must serve the Lord first. And in the holy place, as you enter the holy place first, then you find there are there is no light of day there. There's a covering over that. The only light that shines there is the light of the golden candlestick, which is the type of Jesus. Jesus illuminates everything. It's through Jesus' eyes that you see things. There's a table there that has twelve loaves of bread, one for each of the tribes. And it's never empty. When the priests come in once a week to change that, when they take off a loaf, they slip a loaf in there. They take the other loaf off that's been there a week and they slip an, a loaf in there so the table is always full of bread and it's renewed and renewed and renewed. And then the priests eat that bread. They have uh, flavorings in there and things in there that keep that bread for the priests. So we find in the holy place, it's a progression from being saved, coming into where Jesus becomes everything. It's like I said to some of you last time we were here. It's like when I went with Philip, oh, the more I saw him, the more I thought of him, it got to be Philip, 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 Philip. See, until I came to the place where other men and fellows didn't interest me at all. I just wanted to be with Philip. And then came the day when we said, we forsake all others. That was the day. We forsook all others. And it takes that, friends, to come into the holy place, to forsake all others, putting Jesus first entering into the holy things of God. They're not so holy that you can't do them. You don't have to live such a holy life that you don't, you don't do anything else but just sit and meditate. No, that's not. That's the way of Eastern religions. No, 
the way to get in the holy place is to read his precious word and talk to him. Yes. And the more you talk to him, the more you'll get to know him. And the more you get to know him, you say, Jesus, 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 that's all I can think about. Oh, Jesus, I want to know you better. But there's a better place than that. When Jesus was crucified, he rent that thick veil that goes into the very holiest of holiest that only one priest could enter. And Jesus entered that and put his own blood on the mercy seat, that Ark of the Covenant. And then in the Holy of Holies, there, there are no things, no things. There's only God himself. When we enter into that, we come by the place of service first. We put things aside in order to serve as priests serve, every one of us. And then we're able. People don't come in from the outer court and go into the Holy of Holies. They're not just saved and enter in the Holy They can. They can. But let's teach it right. And that means when I put God first in my life and I make the things of God mean more to me and commit myself to him, then I am able freely to enter the Holy of Holies. And that's when I partake of the three things that are in that precious Ark of the Covenant that Jesus has there. First of all was three compartments, God's holy things, the manna. That was God's provision in the wilderness. Also the tablets of the law. What's the law in the New Testament? Love. We're to show love to everybody we meet. If we have ought against our neighbor, we're to make it right, not wait for them that did the wrong to us. Make it right. Your prayers won't get above your ceiling unless you do. It won't do any good. Make it right. First the law of love, and then we see God's provision, a miraculous provision for our lives in the manna. And the third thing that was in there, I'm going over this briefly, the third thing that was in there was Aaron's rod that budded. And those are the miracles. When you put Jesus first, Praise God. and you enter in to that place where you can minister as unto the Lord, following the Lamb whithersoever he goeth, then the provision of God is there. Anything we need, it comes to us. We don't have to pray about ourselves, do we? We don't pray about, oh, God, supply it. We, we don't do that anymore. We're following the Lamb. I mean, we are examples to you. We're supposed to be, and we are. We say, God, you told us we're going to do it. We don't, we just don't pray. He supplies everything that's necessary. If it's necessary, it comes. We don't have to tell people. They're not our source. God Almighty is our source. Amen. So let us enter into the holy place. Yes. And let those of us that have entered into that enter further in the holy of Amen. holies. And we'd like to have those. Maybe not all of you are ready for that. Don't just come because we ask you to come. Don't do that. Don't make vows and commitments unless you mean them. But if you, if you sincerely want to enter into more that God has for you, we'd like to have you come forward and just kneel right here. And we're just going to have a prayer tonight. Just kneel here. We understand if you don't come. We understand that. We'd rather you didn't come than come and say something you really don't mean. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, the scripture says every knee shall bow, but we yes. don't have to wait Hallelujah. for that time. We can Hallelujah. bow now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. We come by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb, Lord. We enter into that holy place, Lord. Yes, to stand before you, Lord. Oh, Marakitikya. Oh, dear Kapakistundo. These three, or these three, three, three. Yeah. Stomont Akita, to Mont, to Mont, to Punta, Mastin Stanto, to Mastin Stanto. Yes, two months, two months. And Stomont, this Stanto. Two months, two months. Yeah. Stomont Arita, this Understand, understand, understand. Yeah. And Stomont Orisa. Instruments, for their instruments in your hand. And to Kopakosti Stala. Home, home, home. Yeah. Free. Free, yes, free, 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 Lord, free. Yeah, we enter into your presence, Lord. We enter into that holy place. Um bandi yota bota is the bonda rada pakatista. Um basi se kapota katia. Embassies in the embassies there, Lord. You bring, bring it forth, bring it forth, bring it forth. Yes, open the doors, open the doors, Lord. Yes, and they go forth, they go forth. In the name of Jesus, they go forth. Apesto, apesto. The pastors, oh the pastors. Yeah, the pastors, Lord. 
Oh, the pastor, the pastor, prepare, 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 prepare. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Um, obey the spirits upon the doors. Open the doors, open the doors, that they may go in, that they may go in, that they may go in. Yes, yes. For we are kings and priests to minister, yes, unto Lamata in the temple of the living God. Kumbe, kumbe, sins Homes, homes. Yes, deliverance in the homes, Lord. Deliverance in the homes. Deliverance in the homes, Lord. Deliverance. Deliverance. Hallelujah. Ah, obey, obey. Obey the Spirit, Lord. Obey the Spirit. Oh, the Kastantala. Oh, my dear Kastantala. Is the one that we can start. To the rest of the world. Is the one that we can start. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yes, the veil was rent in twain that we might enter in. Open, for Lord, you have opened the doors. You have opened the doors, Lord, that we can come boldly into your presence. But Lord, that we understand, that we understand your ways, Lord. That we understand thy ways, Lord. It's by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. It's through Jesus. 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 Ah, obedience, uh, in, in obedience to your spirit, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord, bring him forth. Bring him forth into that holy place. Oh, Lord, bring him forth, Lord. It's by the, your righteousness, Lord. By your righteousness. By your holiness, Lord. By your holiness, man. Lama tostostom. Oh, namakasi. Istoromondana. Yes, yes, Lord. Only the priest could go in, but Lord, it's by your righteousness. And we come, Father, to be with you upon upon us, sister. Oh, the bas, sister. Oh, the banda, sister. Oh, the the blood, the blood, the blood of the lamb, the blood of the lamb. Yes, 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 Lord, yes, Lord. Haramonda da riastandala, isolemando lo tapacastindala. And as if it were, we put the blood of the lamb over the doorpost. Lord, of each home, Lord. Oh, 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 ma si tola, tu salian tosa, talia stontola, si stadan, ili sorebans, for there is deliverance, there is deliverance in the name of Jesus, there is deliverance, there is deliverance in the name of Jesus, and we come in the name of Jesus, and we speak it forth, we speak it forth, free, free, be free, be free, be free, be loose, be set free, ha, ho, 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 Lord, yes, prepare our hearts, Lord, that we may come into that holy place and that we might stand in that place, Lord, and minister unto you in the name of Jesus. Haramonta to Barasistana, Tiris Nastas to Standara, Oramonta to Kitas Tistis Standara, Turis Tistis Standara La Lianda, Tonamas Tistanda La Lianda, Toraman Lili the Pastistando, Desperandi Lili Astosana, Am Rishistiondo, Restoring, Restoring, Aramando Rada Pacastianda. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, yes. Bring it forth, bring it forth. Masso to punda bata castista, to stand in the testista. This the monda la la matasto. Open that door. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it forth. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Castro monda. Presento all of it, Lord. Presenting all of it. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Si se da testi no. Ori mosto stand elenia. Listo no monda le le mokosta. Bastini onda la no mama sinian. Remostisto no morita standa. Ori makisto no monda la. Mana storia la storia nda le stonda le le ando le le stonda la. Solo monda la le le monda la la la. Solo masisto monda la le le anda. Solo manda la le le anda. Tulama sistalanda la la in the name of Jesus. Oh, Rima. To bring forth the Rima in their spirit, Lord. The Rima out of their spirit. The Rima that speaks life, 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 life. Live, I say. Live, live, live. We speak life and they live. They live. Loose, loose, loose. Atasto stondo do stundi. The destiny, Lord. For their destiny, Lord. For we lift up their destiny. So sa homa sito olama city. In the city, Lord. The word of the Lord. To go forth in this city, in this city. Oh, Tastista, Honda Baratista, Sino, Destiny, the Destiny, Destiny, Lus, 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 Amando Rafakista, Hona Matesti, and the Toramande, Turimastas, in the name of Jesus. Rimastostan, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Anoro Damakas, in the name of Jesus. Apostondo, Ipastinondo, 
Ενώνα είμαι τίστα. Ενώνα είμαι τίστα. Χριστό, χριστό, αραστίστα. Αλαμάντο, χριστό, στοτά. Ενώνα είμαι τίστα. 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 Ora ma sindora Christus Christus Jesus Christa ora ma nono kama sungorista arindo kostanda tile di ya tomo sandala ora ma nala la ora ma stistonda e ya sondala e ya stistonda la la makasta ora ma sama stonginita kum bresti stonda da in the name of Jesus Ia 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 Lord Yes, 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 Lord. Yeah, Pantorista. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord, I'll live for you, Lord. Yeah, and I, yes, within my spirit, it's, it's coming forth to, to build the house of the Lord, brother. Yeah, you can do it. You can do it. Aha, pastor, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, you look to the Lord. Yes, you haven't Santo Lama Hondo Rabakista. Just open your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and be a vessel unto honor. And you look to go into the holy place, the holy place, that holy place. From Huma 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 Hamo Hamo Hamo. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, and you grow strong in the Lord. Yeah, Aramon. The man, Aramo Standa. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Hallelujah. There shall be a performance. Yes, 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 yes. You just come forth in His glory. Hando la masista in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we release upon this this bahana. Dam basti stondo da ti panto stonda. Yes, ha ha. Yeah, yeah. Oh my, oh basti kolam. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes. Praise God. We go into that place, Lord. We go into that place. The minister before you, Lord. Oh basti glia, chong glia. Amen. Yeah, we worship thee, Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, yes, Father. Free, 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 free. Anamataka. Mm. Just look at me. You just look to the Lord. Yes, yes. And you just love the Lord. And you just follow the Lord. Read your Bible every day. Just read that Bible and worship God. And you know, prayer is just talking. And you just talk to the Lord each day. I, uh, for there's much there, brother. Oh, yes, I, I see you in a wheelchair, but this is just a small, part, just a small part of it. Temporary. Yeah, yes. for you see, there's a world out there that needs Jesus. It needs Jesus, <laughs> and you learn that word yes. so that you can take those that are yes. bound and those that walk in darkness and minister Jesus to them. Minister Jesus. Yes, Lord, I will. Jesus. Yes, Lord, I will. Yes, Lord. Jesus, make known Jesus to them. Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, yay, 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 Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Bring it forth. Yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they be Santora. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Halamonda le castindolo. Siliestolonda le liastonda la lianda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kurama sandala la humbra sista, humbra sista, ora matisto rondala. Tu rimontara la le macassindo lo la matastili anda. Tu la mastindele li ansoli manandia. Tu la mastindala.